Now we are going to work on calculating the change in entropy during a phase change process. For these two problems, we've been given the, the enthalpy, the delta H, for a particular phase change, and we are being asked to calculate the delta S. The equation that we will use to solve these problems is delta S of the reaction, the phase change in this case, is equal to the delta H of the reaction divided by the temperature. There's a couple of things that we have to look out for when we're solving this problem. First of all, the delta H that is given to us is not necessarily going to correspond with the, the phase change that we're being asked to solve the problem for. So the first thing that we should check is just the, the consistency or inconsistency with the phase change. Fusion is a fancy word in chemistry for a substance going from a solid to a liquid. And in this problem, we're being asked to calculate the change in entropy for a melting process, which is also solid to a liquid. So that means that we are good in terms of being consistent. The second thing that we have to look out for is the delta H value that's given to us is going to be for one mole of this particular substance. Our delta H that's provided to us is 8.4 kilojoules per one mole of the C4H8O. We are being told that we have 517 grams, which may or may not be one mole. So what we need to do is figure out how many moles we have to see if we need to make an adjustment to that delta H value. We have 517 grams of this substance and its molecular weight is 72 grams per mole. So we are going to, and again, I'm doing this calculation for the C4H8O. So we're going to figure out how many moles we have. It looks like it's definitely more than one. 517 divided by 72 is 7.18 moles. <clears throat> Not one mole. So what we want to do is take our delta H value and multiply it by the number of moles that we actually have, 7.18 moles. So this is going to give us an exact value of delta H for this particular quantity, 60.3 kilojoules. Um, so now what we're going to do is just plug that number in to our delta S, 60.3 kilojoules, divided by our temperature, which is negative 108, but we wanna make sure that that's in units of Kelvin, so we're gonna add 273.15. And that gives us a positive 164.65 Kelvin. 60.3 divided by that temperature is a delta S of 0.366. The units are kilojoules per Kelvin. Let's take a look at the next example. So again, we have another change in entropy of fusion, which is solid to a liquid melting. And we have uh, six kilojoules per mole. So our delta H is six kilojoules per one mole of water, is what we're using in this problem. We're being asked to calculate the delta S when 66 grams of water, so we need to do a gram to mole conversion. We'll do that over here. 66 grams of water, one mole is 18 grams. That's 3.67 moles. Uh, 66 grams of water freezes. Freezing is, as you know, that's the liquid going to a, a solid, not a gas. So we have an inconsistency here. Our delta H is for solid to liquid, and we're being asked to calculate delta S for liquid to solid. As you've learned in the past, when you reverse the direction of a chemical reaction, so instead of going from solid to a liquid, we are now going from a liquid to a gas, that means that we are going to change the sign on the delta H value. So instead of being a, a positive 6 kilojoules per mole, this is actually a negative 6 kilojoules per mole because the delta H for the freezing process, which doesn't really have a name here, so I'm just going to call it freezing, is negative six kilojoules per mole, the opposite of the delta H for melting. Okay, so we've got our delta H with the correct sign and we know how many moles we have, 3.67 moles. So we can figure out what the exact delta H value is for this substance, negative 22 kilojoules. Now we can go ahead and plug that into our delta S 
delta S of the reaction is going to be the delta H of the reaction divided by the temperature. The delta H of this reaction is negative 22 kilojoules. The temperature is zero Celsius, which is 273.15 Kelvin. And this gives us a delta S of negative 0.0805 kilojoules per Kelvin.